Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, and I am controlling the mouse on that computer with this computer. In this video, I will show you how to set up and use remote desktop control in Zoom. Now, for this to work, there is a setting you need to make sure is enabled in your online account. So go to zoom.us or the website for your work address if you have Zoom through work. Go to your meeting settings and make sure remote control is turned on. Now, to the best of my knowledge, you cannot access this setting from within the meeting. There is a share screen tab in the in meeting settings, and here there is a checkbox for enable the remote control of all applications, but I am not entirely sure what that does. I do not have that turned on, but screen sharing does still work if I have the global setting in my online account enabled. So if you know exactly what this setting does and how it is different from the main setting in the online account, please let me know in a comment. I'm going to proceed without it. Now, assuming you have that setting enabled, in order to give someone remote access to your computer, you first need to share your screen. If you're not familiar with screen sharing in Zoom, I have an entire video about that linked in the playlist in the description. But for our purposes here, you're just going to click the share screen button and then only select the program you want to give them control of. So if you share your entire screen with them, that will give them control of your entire desktop, including accessing other programs, your files, the start menu if you're in Windows, etc. So for security purposes, if you only want to give them access to one program, for example, I have a shared PowerPoint here, I'm going to click the PowerPoint file if that's all I want them to be able to edit, and then I'm going to go down and click the share button. Now, let's say we are collaboratively working on a PowerPoint file, and I want the person on this computer to be able to edit something in the PowerPoint that I have saved on this computer. So that's what we're going to set up here. So this computer is the one that is sharing its screen. This is the view that somebody who's logged into the meeting looking at the shared screen would see. To give this person access, you need to access the menu at the top of the screen on the computer that's doing the sharing. I'm going to zoom in so you can see when I do that over here. So to do that, move your mouse up to the top of the screen to bring up the menu. Note that that menu collapses automatically when you share your screen. Go over to Remote Control, click on that, and you have a couple options. You can auto accept all requests, so people can request control of your screen, and then that will grant it to them automatically. If you're teaching a class with a bunch of students, I would recommend not doing that, because then any of them would just be able to take over your screen at any time. So if you want more control over it, you can select one at a time to give mouse or keyboard control to another user. So I'm going to select give mouse or keyboard co control to laptop 2, which is the other laptop. Once I've done that, I will see a message at the top of the screen, I don't know if you can see this here, that says waiting for laptop 2 to control your screen. Now over on laptop 2, when I do that, here I will get a pop-up message that says click to start the mouse or keyboard control of the shared screen. And at the top here, this is probably too small for you to see this text, it says you can control laptop 1 screen. So the takeover is not immediate, the user on laptop 2 has to click first. Once I have clicked the mouse on this keyboard, then the mouse on this computer will control the mouse on that computer. So let's zoom back out to show that. I'll do some typing in case it's hard for you to see the mouse because the keyboard here will also control the screen over there. So I'm going to click on the PowerPoint, hit enter, and type, I am doing remote control. So again, that was typed on this computer. It shows up on that computer because I have remote access. Now, it can get a little tricky in terms of who has control. You cannot both control the mouse simultaneously. So just moving the mouse on this computer will move the mouse on this screen, but this user will not see the mouse move. They will still see the mouse cursor where they have it. In order to actually regain control on this computer, you need to click first. So I'm going to click, and now I can delete the text that the other user has entered. To regain control on this computer, again, it's kind of a clicking war, I need to click again. This has switched back to you can control laptop one screen, not you are controlling laptop one screen. So you need to pay attention to these messages at the top for who actually has control at any given time. Right now, this one says waiting for laptop two to control your screen. So that means this one has control. Again, when I click on this one, now here it says you are controlling laptops one, one screen. Over here it says Laptop 2 is controlling your screen. So again, you can't have simultaneous control and fight over the mouse. Whoever has clicked most recently is going to retake control. 
Now, in theory, the user on this laptop should retain master control because they can stop sharing or remove the remote access at any time, but you can kind of get in a back and forth clicking war over the control that can prevent you from doing that, and I'll show you how. So right now, this computer has control, and if I move my mouse to the top of the screen, I can either click the remote control button and select abort control to remove control from this computer if I want to keep sharing the PowerPoint, or I can just click shop, stop share to stop sharing altogether. The problem, however, is that at any point, this computer can still click to regain control, and when they have control, I can't access the Zoom menu. So they can't access it either. I've only shared the PowerPoint, so they can only control and edit the PowerPoint, but when they have control, it's blocking me from accessing this menu. And even clicking the stop share button one time doesn't actually stop sharing. Clicking once gives me control back, and then I have to click a second time to stop sharing. So in theory, you could try as fast as possible to go up here and access this menu to either click remote control and then abort control or click stop share. But if the person on this computer clicks fast enough, they can keep taking control back before you get a chance to do that. So if you have an uncooperative student, that could be a problem. So I'm not sure if there's a keyboard shortcut or some other way to absolutely override that using the computer that's doing the sharing. If you are aware of that, please let us know in the comments. Now, I do want to show why it's important, as I mentioned earlier, to only share what you want to give access to. So remember that when I shared on this computer, so even if I have an uncooperative user here who keeps taking control back, all they can access is this PowerPoint. So on the shared screen that they see, they only see the PowerPoint window. They don't see the Windows taskbar from this computer. So notice how there's a taskbar here, and there's a taskbar over here, but that's the one that's on this machine. They're not seeing the taskbar from that machine. So let's look at what happens if I stop sharing the PowerPoint and instead share the entire desktop from this computer. So I've stopped sharing the PowerPoint. I'm going to go down here to share screen, and now I'm going to share the entire screen, not just the PowerPoint. Click share. And now I'm sharing the entire desktop here. So if you look closely at this computer, you'll see I actually have two Windows taskbars. There's the one that's actually on this machine, and then within my shared window here, there's the Windows taskbar from this machine. So now if I grant remote access, so I'm going to go up to remote control, and select give mouse or keyboard control to laptop 2. This computer can now access everything over here. So I can go down to the bottom left and click on the start menu. And you see I've opened up the start menu on this computer. So now I go in, could go into any program, the files, or anything. So again, unless you really, really trust the person you are giving remote access to, if it's for tech support or a coworker or something, you definitely don't want to do that. You know, if you're a teacher, I would be very hesitant to give control of your entire computer to a student. But I have heard from teachers who are using this for a game or some activity where they need to do a little bit of setup on their computer, and then they want to give the student access to control just that game or whatever it is. So that could be fine. But again, make sure you are just sharing the program or application you want them to control. Don't let them take over your whole computer. So as always, I hope you found that video useful. I realized this one was probably a little hard to see because I was trying to show what's on both screens at once here, but hopefully between me pointing at things or you following along in your own Zoom meeting, you could figure out what I'm talking about. And I've been getting most of the ideas for my new videos from comments and questions on my older ones. So if you do have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, I can't promise I will get to everything, but please go ahead and leave a comment below this video. Thank you.